This is the Average Guy Network, and you have found Home Gadget Geeks, show number 435, recorded on March 5th, 2020. Here on Home Gadget Geeks, we cover all the favorite tech gadgets that find their way into your home. News, reviews, product updates, and conversation, all for the average tech guy. I'm your host, Jim Collison, broadcasting live from the AverageGuy.tv studios here in a beautiful Bellevue, Nebraska. Mike, like, it was so good. Well, it's a little windy today, but pretty great last two days, right? I mean, spring. Gorgeous. Is, I, and, I this, and this weekend, we're supposed to be in the 70s. Yeah. I think it's just beautiful here. Jay, where you're in, no, where are you, where are you located? Yeah. Philly? Yeah, you were right on Philadelphia. Okay. Yep. Yeah, you're in Philly. And maybe that warm weather hasn't quite got to you yet, but it's coming. We've been mid 50s, low 60s. So it's been warmer for sure. Uh, really nice, sunny. So it's, it's getting there, but it's been nice this week, surprisingly. It's been yeah, no, I think, I think we're in for an early spring. By the way, I watch all these YouTubers, and when they say f- degrees in Fahrenheit, they always put the Celsius. I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to do that. So <laughs> you, Google can figure that out. If you're, if you're in a place where there's Celsius, I'm not Fahrenheit bias or anything. It's just what we, <laughs> it's what we do here in the U.S., okay? Absolutely. So, anyway, we post the show, and there's going to be some really good show notes tonight. So you want to head out to theaverageguy.tv, and then this one is – slash hgg435 if you want to get right to the show notes uh also want to let you know the easiest way to join us live is on our mobile app and we want to thank our patreon subscribers who kind of make that available for us as well head out to homegadgetgeeks.com iphone android you can download it best way to do it on the road stream it it is streaming only which for some of you uh, may be okay and so you can get it homegadgetgeeks Dot com. Big thanks to Kevin Schoonover from last week. Every time Kevin's on here, and I think Jay's going to have the same effect, but every time Kevin is on here, I start spending money, Mike. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Like, this week, we're going to talk about it at the end of the show. I bought a bunch of stuff this week. I don't know. Did it, but big thanks to Kevin. Did you, did you pick up anything this week, Mike? Oh, man. It's taking everything I have to not pull the trigger on that switch that he brought up with the four 10 gigabit ports on uh-huh. it. You know, for 69 bucks, I just never seen anything like that for powered, uh, for POE managed. It was, so I'm I'm this close, but then I keep. But the good part is he warned me about looking at the 10 gig cards and the cables I would need to run. And I'm like, okay, it's, it gets pretty expensive pretty fast if yeah. you want to switch over to 10 gigabit. All I want is my Unraid server and my main machine here to be connected. So I'll probably just do a direct connect instead of getting the switch, save a little bit of money. Um, but then he got me thinking about 2.5 gigabit. So like, yes, yes, I'm I'm going to be spending money. I just haven't yet. Uh, and he was ahead of the times. He was talking about 2.5 gigabit. I linked in the Discord a video that Linus Tech Tips did on 2.5 gigabit. They actually did a follow-up video that was released today on 2.5 gigabit in the home. I swear, they were listening to Kevin last week and thought, hey, yeah, that's a good idea for a video. And so so Linus is obviously watching the show, which is which is pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. No, Jay, are you, have you, uh, internally, last week we talked about gigabit in, right, for, from an internet per speed. Right. But then we talked about 2.5 and 10 gig behind. Are you, are you into that at all? Or are you, you, you thinking about speeding up your internal network? Yeah, I mean, that that's always the debate I have internally here. Um, right now, because I'm in, a, in an apartment, everything is wireless. So it's, you know, limited returns for that sort of speed. But, mm-hmm. um, and I have Comcast, which is always a, a nightmare trying to get <laughs> fast speeds from. So I'm at about, I think I'm actually getting around 250 down, 10 up, which is terrible. Yeah. But in yeah, the future, when us. I move, <laughs> yeah. yeah so, I mean, I would love to move, uh, get faster in. And then I want to do for sure when I buy a house, which is something that I'm thinking about doing in the next year or so um whole house wired with everything yeah and, and go that that route but for now i'm struggling in an apartment and just just doing what i can well you know you got to do what you can it's all right <laughs> there's no no uh no networking shame uh, in any of that i'm kind of a mix i'm a mix of wired and wireless just kind of depends on what i need and and what's the right way to do it um uh, anyways big thanks to kevin uh, at the end of the show, I will mention that at the end of the show, we're going to talk a little bit about, so hang tight, this box behind me and this box above me, this old Windows 7 launch party. There's a reason we got that back. So stay till the end. Got a few things to talk about that. A new Philips Hue bridge came in. I'm going to allude to that. But we're going to talk about that here in a week or two. So just hang tight on that one. I broke a power switch on this computer that's behind me. One of these, well, yeah, I guess you can see right there. 
a um, little harder to replace than you think. So uh, we'll talk about that here at the end of the show. Uh, Jay, you may be able to give me some advice uh, on that the next time. Um, and then, of course, Kevin uh, had me. Uh, I bought this. Well, I did. I did buy this. So this this the LSI. We'll talk about that mm -hmm. at the end. And um, uh, and we should a shout out to Icy Doc. So last week we had you guys go on Twitter and say, "Hey, I see at Icy Doc USA, you should pay attention." And many of you did. Now, if you're listening to this a week or two or three after the fact, still do this. We want you to go out this week. So Vincent from IC Doc got a hold of me and said, hey, let's talk about this, which was awesome. And so um, they are sending over one of their turbo. I should know this really quick. I think I wrote this down somewhere. They're sending over a turbo swap. It's an MB171SP-B because IC Doc can't come up with good, like good <laughs> model numbers, right? But the, the short version is turbo swap. Jay, you know this. You do a lot of hardware, right? Some of these hardware companies come up with some crazy names, right? For their hardware uh, for their and cars. That's where you see the wildest name. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. They, they could have just called it like the Turbo 2, but no, let's give it 42 names, letters and names after that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, Turbo Swap is what's coming. It's basically just a, a single drive that'll go. It's going to replace the DVD that's in here. I don't think we need DVDs anymore. There's a story behind that as well at, here at the end of the show. And, uh, and we're going to, they're going to send it over for a review, bring that in. I'm going to actually put that in uh, one of our mining rigs and, uh, and get some, get that working off uh, some, some hard drive mining. So stay okay. tuned. We want to thank IC Doc for that as well. You can still tweet at them. So here's what I want you to do. Go out at IC Doc, say thanks, you know, so, uh, just appreciate the work that they, that they're going to do. Uh, we're going to kind of uh, feature them through the month of March here on Home Gadget Geeks and just kind of work with them. Many of you, and let me let me show you this just really quick, because um, Gavin Campbell, who's been a longtime listener for the show, uh, he put out, let me get the Twitter window open. I think we'll be all right to do that. So he, um, I asked you to send me some pictures and he had gotten a multi-bay drive. That is a six by two and a half inch and he's got, those full of SSD drives uh, right. in, in his box. Yep. And um, so he posted that to me. He said, uh, it's not the best pick, but I have it uh, my, in my Unraid server, thanks to Mike. <laughs> yes. A couple drives are configured for the cache. The others are running VMs and Dockers on them. Had a small um, spinner in there as well, but it recently died. So Kevin, thanks for, uh, or I'm sorry, yeah, uh, Gavin, thanks for uh, doing that. I didn't get too many other pictures, but these were all the tweets that we got kind of based on that little uh, tweet storm over to IC Doc. And so let's do that again this week. Go out there, jump in at IC Doc USA is who that is who you want to kind of po uh, point your tweets to. And Jay's going to talk about some great hardware tonight as too. You want to as well. If you're not already following Jay, Jay Madison, he, Jay, what's on Twitter? What's your um, everything tech, right? Uh, yeah, at tech everything still. So tech everything. website, tech everything. Everything is at tech everything because that's a long name that no one else wanted. So <laughs> luckily I was able to lock that up. So you got it. E-K everything. Easy to find there. And I have, um, I tweeted out earlier uh, the show and his uh, his Twitter handle is there as well. You want to follow him, follow what he's doing on YouTube. Got lots, lots of great videos. That's where I found Jay as I was going through all these hardware videos. And there, there you were doing those as well. Hey, let's spend a second. We had you way back, I think, summer or spring of last year. Yep. Any, mm -hmm. Anything, uh, you were just moving into the apartment. I was mm -hmm. super impressed that you moved all that gear in. Any any big changes uh, since you've moved in in your hardware? Hmm, big changes. Um, I, there haven't been big changes to the room, the actual office. But hardware wise, my computers, I've switched to a new case, which we'll probably talk about in a second. There, um, some upgrades to audio. That's probably the biggest change. I've kind of overhauled my my desktop audio setup. Um, I think everything else is pretty much pretty much straightforward there. So. Yeah, more just like a little minor changes. The space has been serving me well. I'm loving it. It's it's a great room. Uh, I just I just love it. Cool. Good to have you back. Let's let's um, jump in. I'm going to open up one of your posts here, and let's let's throw that in. Oh, I'm pointing at the wrong thing. Of course, I'm pointing at the wrong thing. 
Let's stop that and bring it up. Talk a little bit um, wh while I'm pulling this up. Talk a little bit about your YouTube channel. What, in yeah. the last year, what what do you focus on? What do you like to review? Any favorite companies? Those kinds of things. Yeah, so I typically like to stick to mini ITX PC builds. That's that's my wheelhouse. That's why I kind of started the channel to cover a lot of those small cases, really compact cases uh, that a lot of people just weren't covering. You know that that just didn't really get a lot of play. So um, I like to do that a lot. I also do audio. Uh, I cover headphones. I'm starting to do amps. Uh, I do more written for that than I do videos because usually my audience they're like, hey, we don't want to see that because you've been doing PC builds for three years. But I do cover that stuff as well. I do love audio. Um, I do a little bit of home theater here and there, but but very rarely. It's primarily just the PC uh, and audio stuff, yeah. Anything, uh, at being a YouTuber, I mean, it's, it's, it's a super interesting space right now to be on YouTube. Mm -hmm. You just mentioned one of the things that drives me nuts. Like, it's your YouTube channel. And I know you have you have watchers, right? Mm -hmm. And then you go to change the subject a little bit, and they they almost come back like, Hey, we don't like, we don't want that crap. We yeah. want the right. I mean, you get, you get, you get some of that kind of feedback, right? How do you, in, in this case, did you just did you kind of give in and say, oh, oh okay, I'm going to, I'll do something different or how'd you handle it? Yeah. So, I mean, I'm not the kind of person who says, well, I've been doing this. I have to keep doing this, but I do think at this point, as people have started to follow and they're expecting a certain thing. I should at least give them most of that, you know, it's uh, reward them for their loyalty to the channel. And I still love mini ITX PCs. It's not something that I'm ever going to stop covering. I don't, I don't think so. Um, but I just, I'm going to try and sp sprinkle in more, more things as we move forward, but I want to keep the people who support me, who, who give me likes and, and really love the content. I want to give them an, out an outlet to kind of come see the stuff that they want to see. And, and also I'd still love doing it. So it hasn't really been that big of an issue. It's not a situation where I'm like, Hey, I hate this now. And I really want to do something else. I could always just start another channel, you know? So I'll keep it in, in that sort of wheelhouse. I'm not going to worry too much about it. And if I get tired of it, then I'll make one of those, I'm tired of this videos and <laughs> just do whatever I want after that. I, I was watching a YouTuber. I watched this guy. I think he's called Handyman, H-A-N-D-E-E, -E, man. Okay. Handyman. And he does, he's building this home out down in the desert of Arizona. And so he's doing, you know, a lot of construction and, and ICF wall builds and all this, you know, kind of, and it's just, I'm never going to do it, but it's interesting. <laughs> So he had someone just show up on his property the, the other day. He was out building and somebody just drove up under his property and was like, Hey, I'm a YouTube, you know, I'm one of your Yeah. Wow. I'm one of your I'm one of your, you know, your watchers, your followers. And he so he put out a video and <laughs> on this. He was like, Look, I'm on YouTube. Don't come to my property. <laughs> like I don't I don't want to see you. <laughs> like yeah. I you know, one of those kinds of things. And it's yeah. it's 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 it, it can be difficult, right? As you think about you're putting yourself out there, you've mm -hmm. built an audience, they respond. And I'm sure, do you leave your comments open or do you moderate? Oh, them? wide open. I love it. It's the wild west. I love the good. I love the bad. Just give it all to me. I, I, I read it. I interact with people. I interact with the trolls sometimes. Like it, I, I, it doesn't bother me if you have a positive or negative comment. It's all the same to me. So I, I enjoy that sort of thing. I, I moderate my comments. Like I don't, I leave them, I'll, you can, they all, they have to be for review, right? They uh, don't get posted until I review them. Do you think that that YouTube penalizes me for? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. I don't think so. I think it's probably smart. And if you look at the bigger channels, most of them moderate because it gets out of hand. I'm still mm -hmm. small enough relatively that I can, I can do that. I can kind yeah. of review them manually. Yeah. But yeah, I don't, I don't think there's a penalty for that. How, how many followers do you have now? On YouTube. Uh, I think 52 ish around okay. there, 52,000, something like yeah, that. Yeah, that's a good number. Yeah, that's yeah. that's good enough to get out of hand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. some of the bigger videos. I mean, I had one video I did a couple months back where I reviewed a case that was similar to another case, and people were getting like up in arms and saying they were copying <laughs> it. And how could you do this? And I didn't make the case, guys. <laughs> it was sent to me for review. Like, you know, so it's just, you just kind of have to roll with it. People are going to people, so to speak. Uh, so. I love, I love. Let's, let's talk about cases since this is your, your bread oh, and butter. Uh, beauty. Yeah. The, the laser 3D LZ7 XDT mini. <laughs> 
<laughs> there, another mouthful. Another yeah. mouthful. When um, you but, when when you approach reviews, do you do you try to be methodical about the way you do each one of these cases? I mean, if I was going to come over to your site and kind of look at them, would they all be very similar? Yeah. So particularly with the cases, because that's probably if I look back, the thing I've covered the most: ITX cases. So it tends to be very similar uh, in terms of what I cover. So I can compare, go back now for two years ago from to smaller cases, bigger cases, and make like temperature comparisons, sound comparisons, and running the same tests using the same equipment. So yeah, I do try to be very consistent um, with, with the way I cover them. Yep. And what do you, when, when you're doing a, a build like this or you're reviewing a box, what, what are the things you really look for and that you really like to see in a, in a box? Yeah. So I think for one, um, if it's ITX, I look for the best efficiency when it comes to the use of space. So how are you using the leaders that you have available to you in this case? So for example, the XTD here is one of the best uses of space that there is out there. There are a lot of ITX cases, there are tower cases, there are really compact cases. They work to varying levels of effectiveness because of the way that co the components are positioned. So this is by far one of the more unique ones, this XTD here, simply because it allows you to fit pretty much everything you could in a normal tower ITX case, but including a, a tower cooler um, or a, a half tower cooler, and but in a very compact 10 liter case, which is rare. I don't think there's another case out there that can do specifically what this one does. This may be one you wanna to come to the video for, we're showing a picture kind of of your table layout. That's yeah. not, I mean, besides the board, that's not small gear that yeah. you're putting in there, right? Full size GPU, mm -hmm. full size um, CPU cooler, I would yep. assume, in mm -hmm. some re in some regard. What else is on? What's the what's the fan over to the or what's that over to the right? So it has it accommodates an 140 or 120 mil millimeter fan. So that's mm -hmm. 140 millimeter fan there. That's the intake. So that pushes air directly over the motherboard, which allows everything to stay super cool, uh, which is rare for a case that's this small and having coolers up to, I believe it was 135 millimeters, which is most mid height, full height coolers. You can get very creative with, with the coolers that you put in there where most cases have like a 70 millimeter limit, um, et cetera. Like the cooler you see on the right there under my arm is a 70 millimeter cooler. And that's previously probably one of the better ones that you could fit in most ITX cases. But now this case allows you to go, go a little crazier. So and power supply is where run. I'm sorry, oh, where's the power supply? The power supply you can see on this, yeah, you see that there, the bottom um, right hand corner there in this yeah. picture, yeah, yeah, okay. I don't think I have a picture of the top open, but if you watch the video, if anyone wants to see how it actually looks internally, I have a picture of what it looks like with everything obviously set up. I do a full time lapse build of it, but yeah, that takes SFX power supplies, um, normal. It also has support for two SSDs or two 2.5 inch drives of your choice, um, and then obviously full length. Uh, dual slot GPUs. So you can get super powerful systems. I've got a, fi uh, a 9900K at five gigs in there and it runs. Wow. Yeah, it, it's it's amazing. Honestly, it's it's actually quite amazing. It's gonna be like uh, one of the best mobile editing rigs, right? Like if you were going to like a, a big conference and you're a YouTuber and you need to pack up a, a computer that you can go back to the hotel room and edit on. Yep. Yeah. I mean, that's a beast of a computer. That's better than most people's, you know, full desktops <laughs> that they have absolutely. in a small form factor. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. the, the thing is, the thing is a beast and it's, it's laser cut acrylic, so it's not metal. So it is very light. If that was something you wanted to do, okay. you could certainly do it. Um, there's a smaller version of this as well, which was the case I was using prior to, to this one. Uh, it's just the lasered LZ, LZ7, not the XTD. And that had similar properties, but it only had support for half length graphics cards. So this is kind of the big brother of that. Mm. Um, it's just it's just a really cool case. Now, not cheap. Definitely similar to other ITX offerings, it's it's fairly expensive, but that's what you get with limited run cases like this. Acoustics when, pretty good on this? Yeah, acoustics are surprisingly good. So the intake, the side intake allows you to run the fans at reasonable levels. Um, if you're doing like renders while overclocking, the fans are going to spin up on the CPU cooler, but it's nothing that you you wouldn't expect there. Right. The decibel levels there. You're 45. It's totally reasonable. You know, I, I have no issues. 
on your site and on this post, you talk about the, you got the system noise listed there as well as temps that are mm -hmm. in there. So folks want to know, do you have a favorite? So you have a motherboard that you go to for these mini ITX builds. Is there a certain brand or a certain motherboard you like to put in here? Well, some that are better than others. I would say for ITX, um, if you're going Intel or AMD, ASRock is probably the go-to for me right now. Um, simply because of the way they handle cooling of the chipsets and various components on the board. I think they do an excellent job. They use actual heat sinks that pull heat away as opposed to just pieces for show that you see on a lot of other shiny, beautiful motherboards. Um, the, the ASUS stuff is pretty good too, uh, but I would say that's second place. They've got a really strong bias and I like the features of the boards, but they get a little cartoonish sometimes with the way that they're laid out and the visuals of it for me. So I think the ASRock boards are really killing it, and and they seem to be really strong across the board. In the small case space, I mean, there's a huge movement right now, and it's 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 probably not as new as I think it is, but we've gotten out of control on RGB lighting. Like it is just <laughs> like it is just insane, and and now on the boards, it's coming kind of standard, and every slot is mm -hmm. got RGB. Are, are you seeing that same trend in the small form factor space or is that kind of being limited to the bigger spaces? Uh, unfortunately or fortunately, <laughs> yeah, it's on, it's on the ITX boards, depending on how you look at it. Like the board I have in here has a strip of LEDs. The last one I had had a strip of LEDs. It's, it's, it's fine. You can disable them. And they all have actually the, the jack or the mounting point for internal LED strips. So that trend isn't, isn't going anywhere. They're making those boards for everyone. I think, in the right case, it can look pretty cool. So I'm not a, a all around LED hater, but as you can see, I don't have them running currently. Yeah, we're gonna ha we have Ryan and Bob coming on uh, next week from Think Computers, and they they review the big cases, mm -hmm. and and of course that's kind of the space where this these this kind of RGB craze has gone and man when you watch the youtube videos there's a bunch of youtubers that are covering these and it's just lights it's lights <laughs> everywhere it's like new york city um which again uh, no hate on that but just it, it seems like we're doing a lot of it mike but what i hate about it is you guys know how i build my computers it's the ebay special right like I, i'm using yeah. all this old gear i'm like i don't want leds in here lighting up you don't want to see what's in here i need i need a, a, a no panel on this case it has a panel and a nice led that just shines on this uh old blue style Intel motherboard. I'm like, yeah, and, and we don't want to see that. We don't need any highlights there. So at least it's a blue <laughs> LED so that it doesn't like, yeah, just, I, I don't need those highlighting my system. Uh, well, I, I guess I can't talk. I've got eight monitors on my desk. So, you know, <laughs> everybody has their, uh, everybody has their vice. Mine just happens to be um, monitor space. Jay, you, you've been building computers for a while. Has the, has the actual stuff that you have to do to build a PC changed much. It's been a, I think it's been four years actually since I built my last rig and I used to do a lot of that. I haven't done much of it. Is the, is the industry changing much or is it kind of still the same if you did it four years ago or five years ago, it'd be okay now? Yeah, I think it's, it's pretty similar. Um, there are a few differences. The big, the biggest difference in terms of building would probably be, for one, I think the coolers have now have better mounting hardware. So it seems to be pretty simple to get any cooler on pretty much any motherboard. Uh, I would also say that the M.2 drives are different. So now that they're on the motherboards, that eliminates a lot of cables and simplifies systems. So I think that was probably the best change, obviously, speed wise. And in terms of ease of ease of building, it, it really kind of sped things up a lot. Now you're jamming a lot into a little tiny space. And so an M.2 is advantageous to that. But if you had a choice between M.2 and going just kind of with a regular um, SSD drive, do, do you, is there one you choose every time or is it based on space? I would never use a standard SSD again if I could. <laughs> if really? I could only do uh, M.2s, I would go all out. Like and I've got two in this system now and I only have SSDs because I need more storage. That's yeah. <laughs> Just overall space, uh, it consider. I mean, overall speed considerations. Then at that point yeah. for you, yeah. Space, speed. Obviously, the speed is is like night and day. Not that it really matters for doing regular tasks like gaming or anything. It's people. You don't necessarily need uh, NVMe SSD for gaming. 
Um, but having the speed when you need it is, is helpful. And just the simplicity of it, not having yeah. cables running. It's multiple cables. It's a power cable and also a SATA cable going to your motherboard. Just eliminates all that. So I, I really love them. And I, I would love to do a system that has only M.2 drives and go with all external storage. But that might be something in the future. We'll see if we can make that. Yeah, actually, IC Doc, who we're working with, has this nice little enclosure where you can get a couple of those in the enclosure and get them external. So that that may be love one that. of those little things I have to have to say, hey, we got this guy over there <laughs> who uh, you might you might want. They try to give it to me. I um, It's interesting. And Mike. For you, have you done much uh, M2? I haven't, or? just because, like I said, with my motherboards, I'm always using like old motherboards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, they, which all do not have M.2. No, but anything anything new today, right? right. Anything yeah, yeah. that any motherboard you buy today is going to support that. Price wise, I haven't priced M, M, M.2 over a, a regular um, SSD drive. Are are they about the same now, or is it still a little more expensive? It's definitely going to still be a little more expensive. The good thing is that, and this is what I tell people all the time who are doing budget systems, there are obviously the best one right now would be traditionally considered the Samsung 970 Evos. Those are fantastic drives or the pros, whatever have you. Those are pretty much the standard go-to. You can get a 256 gig one of those for probably around 80 bucks, give or take. So I usually recommend people, hey, if you don't have the budget to get like one terabyte or you want to do something else, Get one of those for 80 bucks as your boot drive. It'll speed everything up. Then get a secondary hard drive. You could even go with a flatter drive to store your games, files, all that fun stuff. If you have to reboot Windows, it simplifies it, and it, it just speeds up your whole system. So you can mix and match, and I think that's probably the, the thing that most people are, are doing uh, these days. Yeah, I'd agree. And also, if you're helping someone who's not as techy build a system, make sure you mention them, too, that there's a difference between like M.2 NVMe or mm -hmm. M.2 SATA. Right. right, they look the exact same, plug in the same, but you're not going to get the same speed benefits when you go with a SATA M.2 drive compared to an NVMe drive. Something yeah. that I mean, I even I think a lot like I didn't realize that until not too long ago. Right, something you don't think about. Hey, it it looks the same, right? You plug it in. Uh, same thing as like SSD standard SATA versus a spindle drive. Right, same mm -hmm. connector, just different speeds. Things to think about. Yeah, and I also tell oh. people. Up, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to no, 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 no. Go ahead, go ahead. Jay. I also tell people. Um, one thing that I do, I'm a big, I'm a big fan of, is buying the M.2 SATA version of a drive. If, if you need a standard 2.5 inch, and then using an enclosure to then convert it. So in the future, if you want to use that for say like a laptop or a future system, you can just pop it mm -hmm. out and then just go and you know just use it. So I mean, you can get I have I use these Saber enclosures. They're like 10 bucks. So you get them, pop it in there, and it works just like a standard platter drive or, or 2.5 inch. Yeah, I didn't realize that. Yeah, yeah. That's a good, now, that's do they good have tip. those for internal as well? Yeah, yeah. These, uh, these are internal. Yep. These I are have internal. actually I have external yeah. ones and internal ones. Um, these are they literally just look like a saber and drive or a regular 2.5 inch. Yeah. That's interesting. All. Yeah. So Mark was saying in the chat room, he says he built a system for a friend over Christmas, M.2, and all USB storage. It was strange not wiring up drives, <laughs> right? Yeah, on the on the inside, uh, picked up a USB 3.1, 10 uh, external M.2 nice. enclosure today. So yeah, that would be, and I'm assuming that's, if it's 3.1, is that USB-C? It could be. It could be A it's still too, though. So. There's, it's such a weird, it's a weird space. I, I yeah. think I'm going to find myself uh, all of a sudden, I've caught the hardware bug. And again, it comes about every year about this time. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, but uh, uh, changing some things out. I, like Mike, uh, end up, and we're going to talk about this at the end of the show, repurposing some older hardware to do very storage things. Jay, are you a NAS guy at all? Are you keeping storage kind of off the PCs then in, in a NAS? I I think we, we touched on this last time. Yeah, so man. I have a NAS. I have a four bay NAS, but it still isn't. I haven't hooked it up since I moved in. I honestly, I was using it to do a lot of media streaming before. So I have probably, mm -hmm. I don't know, 800 movies from over the years and a ton of music. Um, and with like Netflix, Amazon, I haven't needed it as much. I just haven't needed it. So since I moved in here, I haven't even hooked it up. So it's just kind of sitting in the box. If you can see, I can probably point to it. Oh, wait. This way. There we go. There we go. There's my little Western digital 10 gigabyte backup crappy USB 3.01. And I know that's going to kill you guys, but that's what I've been using to back up my video files. <laughs> it does, if it does the job, right? <laughs> it does make me a little sad that you're not using <laughs> that. 
It makes uh, me sad too, but I, I, I truthfully don't need the NAS currently. Um, in the future, like I said, when I move and, and get everything set up, I'll definitely be looking back into that. Um, but unfortunately, right now, I'm not, I'm not set no. up. No I've been on that trend too, though. Like I go in these waves of like, I need the best everything got to be amazing. And then like recently I've been in a, Hey, let's consolidate. Cause I go through the phases of building up. Like I got so much extra stuff, you know, for example, consolidating everything into my one unraid server, instead of having a machine for the camera and VR for, you know, for uh, untangle for my route. I'm like, can we consolidate this stuff? You know, okay. Do I really need the super fast internet speed from Cox? No, I don't. <laughs> let's, let's bring that down a little bit. Let's, you know, and I've been kind of trying to see, okay, what are my bare bones? What do I really just need to run my day-to-day? And my wife and I are kind of like you. We, you know, we're all Plex. We used to be, like everything was Plex. And now I kicked all my friends off, kicked the family off. <laughs> and that was a freeing moment where as soon as I didn't need to keep it up and running for other people, I was kind of mm-hmm. like, we started watching more Netflix in the last yeah. week. And we got into some of those shows. I'm like, man, maybe we really don't need all the Plex stuff that I was, you know, kind of laboring over uh, to exactly. make for a good experience for family and friends. And it, that, that was kind of a freeing moment. So I, I definitely understand like the consolidation, like use what works, right? Yeah. Why complicate things if it doesn't need to be complicated? Absolutely. So I yeah. have Netflix, Amazon, and Comcast. Between those three, I mean, <laughs> I, I have access to most things. So, Are you I, affected I, by the whole Sinclair uh, thing for cable? That's been driving me nuts. So they like YouTube TV is who we use for cable. And them and Sinclair, who controls the Fox uh, Sports regional channels, Mm -hmm. they haven't been able to come to an agreement. So I Mm -hmm. lost my regional Fox Sports Midwest. So like the Creighton game that I was watching, Creighton basketball Mm -hmm. yesterday, couldn't watch that. Not going to be able to watch my Royals um, baseball Mm -hmm. because that's all Fox Sports Midwest. I, You know, it's one thing that Sinclair has been struggling to come to agreement with a lot of cable companies. I didn't know if you were affected by that, too. We are not because, at least locally, because we have Comcast Sportsnet in this area, so they gotcha. carry all the games. Luckily, um, but I, I don't know. I'd have to look at some of the other Fox channels to see if we're missing anything. Yeah, but I know we lost Stars, we lost ID, we lost a couple channels because you know it's getting more expensive and they can't keep up. Um, so similar, similar issue, just probably different channels. Yeah, we're going to start having to go like full a la carte. Like we were trying to go a la carte out of convenience. Yeah. And now we're going to have to go a la carte out of you know necessity because, <laughs> okay, these people have these channels, these don't. Hopefully, uh, even some of the big cable companies, right? They're not going to have everything. You're going to have to go start looking for other solutions. It's interesting. Yeah. So pretty soon streaming will be more expensive than cable. And we'll yeah. have... It's, gonna, it's going it's, that way, it's isn't going it? going to. Yeah. yeah. And then what will we say? We're reattaching the cable? <laughs> <laughs> I reattached the cable. I soldered it back together. Yeah, we started. <laughs> like, what, are you, what are you doing now, Mike? Remember, Jay lives in the city that threw snowballs at Santa, so nobody <laughs> wants to like. Nobody uh, wants to do that. So true. We can't live it down. We no, cannot it's, live it it's down. great. That's my. That's the only joke I know about Philly. So, um, so Jay, thinking about if I if I'm doing a build today, and you do a lot of this, so if I'm doing a build today, whether it's going to be on a small board or full size board. I'm really thinking, and, and you just said this, I'm really thinking about a 256 or larger M2 NVMe drive, right? That's And that's price-wise, that's still going to be pretty reasonable, right? Absolutely. I'm, I am going to want, and, and where do you land, where do you land on, on, on memory? So do you go 8, 16, do you just max it out? What do you, where are you at with, how much memory do you like to have in a box? So that would be, it depends on what you do, right? Okay. And that's, that's what I tell everyone. I would say a minimum, try to go with 16, just in case. Um, if you really are stretching a budget, sure, go eight. Make it work into your budget. Um, but I usually recommend 16. That's a, There's a sweet spot. Even for gaming, there have been a lot of reports that there is benefit. There are games that can chew up a lot of RAM. And obviously, Chrome by itself can chew up a lot of RAM. So it's definitely something that I recommend. Anyone doing content creation, even if you're just streaming, I say pop 32. Uh, it's it's just better. If you're doing any sort of video editing, anything like that, compiling, 32 is, is kind of the jump off point for that. I'm running 32. I'm thinking of trying to get 64 at this point. So it, that's that's really where I stand. But also, if you're running Ryzen, I would say go faster RAM over more capacity because it benefits from, from actually faster RAM with their Infinity Fabric. So it really depends on what you're doing. Intel, not as much, but uh, AMD go with faster RAM if you can. So if it's the choice between 16 gigs at, you know, 2,600, which I don't know, well, that's not really 2,400, uh, or or 8 gigs at 32, you probably want to start with 8 gigs and then kind of roll from there. So. Yeah. 
Are you uh, you overclocking anything at this point in, in, on your builds, or are you leaving it standard? I'm overclocking and underclocking everything. So that's that's <laughs> or undervolting everything. That's that's where I'm at. So I got I've lately been heavy into undervolting, which is for mobile and desktop has some pretty distinct advantages. Um, so GPU undervolting specifically is something that I'm I'm kind of touching on more lately. I have a 2070 Super in my current rig, and undervolting it, I was able to drop the temps by around five to ten five to ten degrees, which is great. Uh, while still overclocking it at the same time. And my GPU, or I'm sorry, my CPU running at five gigahertz at, I think, one thing. There's some great guides out there uh, that people can show you how to do so. There was a big run during the Bitcoin craze from 2018 on on GPUs. Mm -hmm. Do you have, as you're building systems, are, are we to the point now where you put at least some kind of hefty GPU in everything? Or do you have, do you, you know, is there kind of a reasonable, because, the you know, they jacked the prices way up on them. Yes. And then both companies came out with these monster GPUs mm -hmm. that are like $1,000, right? Yeah. So yeah. where, where are you at today on the GPU side? What do, you, what do you kind of recommend if someone's doing a build? If you're doing a build before you even say, this is the GPU I want, what kind of games do you play? And what monitor do you want to use? Those are the those are the two considerations. So if you're say, hey, I play esports titles, I play Fortnite and stuff like that. That doesn't take a lot of horsepower. Grab like a sixteen sixty Ti, you'll be fine. You'll be able to play that pretty much all day on most monitors. If you play AAA titles, you know you want to play like Tomb Raider, those kind of games, Metro with ray tracing. Then obviously you can need to bump it up a little bit. So um, I say for for sure. For entry level gamers, people people doing esports, a 1660 Ti is a fantastic card. Like you really can't beat it. The 2060 is too, but a little more expensive. Obviously, I try to stay away from the AMD stuff simply for power consumption reasons with compact builds. But um, if you want to do 120 hertz gaming, 144, 240 hertz gaming, then you want to start thinking of moving up to 2070 Super at minimum, and then obviously it goes up from there. Um, for 4K gamers, there's really no GPU still that can handle 4K gaming properly, to be perfectly honest. So not for AAA titles, at least. But So I think the 2080 Ti's, those kind of cards are a bit of a waste, in my opinion. Um, 2080 Super is probably where I would stop in terms of performance and price. Uh, but it really depends on what you want to do. I, I know I'm, these are kind of like non-answers. but <laughs> No, it's good. It's, I think, well, in, in the audience here, it's going to dig in and figure it out anyways. But mm -hmm. I, I find it to be a good starting spot. Like people are always kind of asking me, like, where do I start? And then they want to do some homework on it. You spend a lot of time doing this and talking about it. We, I really haven't bought a GPU now in maybe two years. Yeah. And, you know, I bought a bunch of 1060s uh, back in the day and got them. Great card. And they, yeah, they're, 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 you know, three yeah. gig cards. They do great. Yeah. I don't game. I don't PC game. Okay. So I don't have to worry about that. I just watch YouTube. So, you know, works great for those. Um, yeah. So entry level, then I'd yeah. say just flat out entry level 1660 Ti, fantastic card. Okay. That's the um, card I want to jump up to. I'm on a 1060 right now, 1060 okay. SC, so it's a six gigabyte card. And I've, I'm have i able to play and stream off that using the NVMe coding or NVNC coding, yeah, codec, yeah, whatever, that, that little extra chip on there, right? Mm -hmm. So I use that for processing, for encoding the stream, play off it. Now, what's important for me, I'm super glad you mentioned it, depends on the monitor too. Yep. I've seen some people get like a, you know, a 2070 and they're still running a 1080p 60 hertz monitor. I'm like, right. you're kind of defeating the purpose there. You can't even go exactly. above it. But so I play at 1080p 60 and that 1060 is perfect for mm -hmm. all the games that I've tried, right? You play Escape from Tarkov, which isn't even optimized very well. Uh, all the esports, things like that. And it, and it works just fine for that. Now the, t the, um, the 1660 that you mentioned, what I like about that is it has the touring, um, technology in it so you're encoding if you are using it for streaming it's going to look a lot better it rivals the h264 encoding for any sort of streaming so I, I agree with you that is like the i think it's a sweet spot for cards especially for people who are kind of maybe just getting into it maybe they have a 144 hertz monitor mm -hmm. they just got it but they're still okay with 1080p um have you been able to do 1440 on that 1660 i it depends on the game. You can yeah. do 1440, but I, I wouldn't really recommend it. If people are, are looking for that resolution, I'd probably recommend jumping up. To uh, like a 16 or like a... 2060, you could 2060. probably start doing 
1440, but really, if you want to comfortably be able to do 60 hertz at 1440 for most titles, you probably want to do a 2070 Super. That's, 2070, that's okay. probably really where you would need to be. So it, it depends for sure. But I, I mean, yeah, if you jump up to a 1660 Ti, you, you won't be you won't be sorry. It's a great car for sure. Jay, am I, for am a great I, price too. Yeah. Am, am I sacrificing anything by going like with the mini ITX, you know, going small with gaming? Am I sacrificing anything over a, a full size build today? It depends. Yes, I would say if I'm going to be honest, usually yes, you are sacrificing something. So it's typically um, heat and noise; those are typically the biggest trade offs, um, and also overclocking headroom. Since obviously the parts run hotter, it, there's a lot less room. There's less room for cooling as well. So you're, you're not putting a 360 mil radiator in one of these cases, you know. Mm-hmm. So that's typically what it is. Um, this XTD case is a rarity in terms of what it can do, but even that has its limitations. I wouldn't be able to put like a Threadripper CPU in there and, and go crazy or anything like that. So you have to pick tailored components to fit these cases as opposed to picking a case and then filling it with whatever you'd like. Mm-hmm. So it really does take a little more care, I guess you'd say, um, and planning uh, to find the right power supply, the right GPU, the right fans that will be quiet but still cool, et cetera. So yeah, you, you are you're also sacrificing sanity because it can really <laughs> drive you crazy trying to build up some of these systems. <laughs> have you fun. have you started a build and realized uh, as you were getting it put together, like yeah. you got the wrong things on this? Yeah. So there's a case, um, this one that I'm pointing to right there. It's like a vertical case. It's it's it was a nice case. I tried to fit an ultra compact 92 millimeter Asa Tech um, liquid cooler in there. And I was like, all pumped. I ordered it from eBay. It wasn't available. I was, I was so excited. Uh, and now it didn't fit. <laughs> so you run into stuff like that where you're dealing with actual millimeters of space as right. opposed to inches. Yeah. And it, it sometimes just doesn't work out. Yeah. So temperature and, and, and volume or sound or heat, yeah. right? Are the two. Do you, are you also overclocking your GPUs then when you put them in as well? So under voltage overclocking on those? Yep. So I, I run, I push everything as far as I can without murdering the components inside the heat. So GPUs typically um, are a little tougher, I would say, in the ITX cases. The CPUs, the coolers are a little larger, more heat fins, more space. So it, they tend to cool a little bit better. But I haven't really had any any major issues there. Obviously, if you're going to run the compact cards, the ITX versions of, of these cards, there's not really a lot of overclocking headroom at all. So in a lot of the cases, if you if you guys check out my channel and go back, most of the builds I've done have compact GPUs in them. So there are some real trade-offs there when it comes to overclocking performance uh, and overall heat. So so for that, yes, for cases that can take full full size, full length cards, not as much. Um, but yeah, I do like overclock. Yeah. Well, and and then how do you do you, when you're when you're kind of testing the temp? The performance. Do you do you use a kind of a standard piece of software? Is there something you use to kind of get the measurements so you know the you know you're getting what you want plus temperature and sound? Yeah. So I use Furmark for uh, GPU burn and testing. That basically just pegs it at 100 and gives you nice even stress test numbers. It gives you that like eye of Sauron if you've ever seen it on your screen while it's going around. Um, and then I use Prime 95, the stable version for, for the, the CPU. Those are pretty straightforward, uh, pretty consistent. Just make sure you're using the same version because the different versions of Prime 95 and Furmark do different things. Uh, so you just have to be consistent with that there. And then for testing the actual performance, I like to run TimeSpy uh, loops. So that's 3D Mark software that does automatically generated scores, essentially. Um, I just run endless loops of that to see what actual gaming performance you'll get in terms of temperatures and clock speeds over time. Um, and you can just track everything with fraps for like frame rates for actual game data. Uh, yeah, that, that's pretty much it. Uh, that's that's the typical suite. I'm trying to think, did I leave anything out? No, I think that's about it. And you just keep you just do that the same for every build that you do, and then just kind yeah. of keep track of it mm-hmm. to 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 report it on your um on your site. Have you found? Um, are do you think more people are building than built two or three or four years ago? Is that community getting smaller, staying the same? Because it's I, yeah. I don't feel like there's as many system builders as there used to be. But yeah, I, I'm not in that space anymore. So what what do you yeah. think? 
I think um, I think when the ten series cards came out and the cores jumped from four to six and eight, I think that kind of gave it a kick in the pants. I mean, if you look at Nvidia's stock prices, I would say yeah, absolutely yes. <laughs> um, but I, I think that, that the YouTube community has had a huge role in in keeping it alive for sure. There are a lot of really really popular channels that do a ton of PC building. Um, and and there have been a lot of great games released on PC lately, so I do think it's pretty strong. I haven't noticed any decline in viewership or readership. So those numbers, I mean, obviously that's an anecdotal point for me, but I, it seems to be pretty consistent. I haven't seen any drop off. I don't know if it's necessarily growing like it was. Um, if anything, I think the pricing of current parts, you know, 20 series cards, the new generation of CPUs, maybe pricing a lot of people out, mm -hmm. um, but. People are pretty much done with the last gen systems in terms of gaming systems, Xbox and PlayStation 4. So I think they're kind of going back to the PC because we can get better graphics and we can do a whole bunch of other cool stuff. Um, but I also think the PC laptop market, gaming laptop market, has chipped into some of the desktop stuff. stuff really? There. Yeah, I do. I think so. Yeah, there have been a lot of really good, powerful laptops released in the last year or so, year or two. Uh, that can really do most of the things that desktops can do. If you have a six core laptop with, uh, like we mentioned, the 1660 Ti, it can pretty much do what you need it to do unless you're you know, rendering constantly or compiling code all day. So for casual users, gamers, it, it, it can do what you want it to do. I'd yeah. Do, do you also review laptops on your site then, the, the gaming laptops? I reviewed, I think the only laptop I reviewed was the Surface Book 2, just because I was so enamored with it when I bought one a couple of years ago but I will be reviewing laptops soon. It's just honestly kind of boring. So, and there's like <laughs> a million laptop review sites. I don't yeah. think we need another one, but if there's yeah. something, as with anything, if there's something that no one's covered and I think mm -hmm. it's really cool, like the laptop I just got, the Air 15 Classic, I'll probably eat, at least write an article about it. Okay. Okay, how do you like that laptop so far? Oh, oh, I love it actually. I have it right here. It's yeah, cool. yeah, show it so to this, us. This thing. This beauty right here. Let me, uh, uh, so let this me go is the Aero 15 Classic. Uh, it's very thin, as you can see. Let me. I'll close it for you guys. It's very thin. Uh, less than an less than I think it's 0.74 inches and around four pounds. Uh, 15 inch screen, 4K. This is the 4K model that I got because obviously I create 4K 60 hertz, um, matte black, beautiful 94 watt hour battery, and two M.2 drive slots. So this thing is loaded. The only bad thing, I guess, would be this webcam, but I rarely use Ooh, a webcam. Oh, down there, huh? Yeah, yeah so you would want to plug in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you'd want to plug yeah. in a webcam for that. What's the retail on that? So that's another thing. So this current model that I have here has a 9750H, which is the Intel six-core uh, CPU. I think it goes to 4.3 gigahertz. Um, great CPU for gaming and for creating. Fantastic. It also has a 1660 Ti, and it came with a 256 gig NVMe SSD. So I got this for $1,300, oh. which is a fantastic deal. I mean, that's great. With the 4K screen, Pantone certified, one of the crispiest, most beautiful screens I've seen on a laptop, probably better than my actual 38 uh, inch ultra wide monitor screen, if I'm honest. Uh, Thunderbolt has everything. USB 3, it really has everything. Uh, a powerful machine that I've been really pleased with so far. And you said, so that's a gigabyte, right? That's a gigabyte, gigabyte. Arrow? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Arrow 15. Arrow yeah. 15 Classic. Mm -hmm. So there's mm -hmm. a Classic, and then there's just a newer Arrow 15. Um, they have, the newer model has, or I guess the newer body has also an option for an OLED screen, which is fantastic, but kind of kills your battery life. Um, so there are some options there in terms of what do you want it to look like uh, and what do you want it to do specifically. But this is the model I chose because for a creator, this is pretty fantastic. It has a number pad, which for me, someone who does write code at times and also just likes having a number pad, that's that's really great. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a beast. Yeah, that is it, a big one. And what was the weight on that again? It's around four pounds. Okay, so it's, it's not, I think it was four point two four. Don't quote me on that. But. Do, you, do, you, do you take it with you much, or does it pretty much stay there for gaming? Yeah, I actually I bring it to work with me every day. Yeah. So because I have a work laptop. Um, a Vivo book, which is fine, but it's a work laptop. It's yeah. underpowered. Yeah. And if I need to like <laughs> use any of the Adobe suite, uh, you know, any of those applications or anything, I'll just have that. Or from I have a second, I can just play a game or something like that. I do like having it just around. 
No, that sounds cool. You know, you, you mentioned we were talking about video cards and how expensive, like they, they somehow took that from, and I remember thinking a $300 video card was outrageous, <laughs> right? And yeah. then they somehow took that to a thousand. Another yeah. thing, and you, you alluded to this early or in the program, the other thing that's gotten a little out of hand are our headphones. Like, <laughs> like these went from, you know, we just, things we just wore and they were maybe 25 bucks to, you know, now we're, you know, we're buying Bose stuff for <laughs> 350, 400, 450 Sennheiser and stuff like that. Are you seeing, you know, you, you review, you, you like the audio a bit. Are, is that the truth? Am I saying the truth? Is it getting out of control? It's so the funny thing is it, it's actually always been out of control. If I'm honest, so yeah. speakers and audio gear historically have, has been some of the most overpriced stuff ever there's a lot of snake oil there's a lot of this does mystical things when it really just sounds bad there's a lot of that in the audio space and because it's so subjective it's hard for people to just say uh you, what you're saying is nonsense so for years i mean we've had high-end speaker systems high-end headphones that were just okay and recently and to be perfectly honest mass drop or, or drop had a lot to do with this um bringing a lot of high-end products to mainstream customers for more affordable prices. And we've seen an explosion kind of in the audio space where we're having new high quality amplifiers, new high quality headphones like this, which previously would have cost several thousand dollars probably, uh, and now under that that thousand dollar price point. Now, still not cheap, still not super affordable, but I would say you do get what you pay for if you're looking for high fidelity audio um, in the 500 to a thousand dollar range. There's just so much good stuff. I find um, a lot of folks with earbuds and they're traveling or, you know, the noise canceling when mm -hmm. they're in an airplane. Is there, you know, is there a space we're looking at the, I don't know if you said this, uh, I had a, a phone call come in, but that we're, what are we looking at on screen here? And why do you, do, do you so like these? Folk out. Elex is what we are looking at here. So this is a pair of, uh, I will say it's a $700 pair of headphones. It's not cheap, uh, but it, for what it does, it's incredible and a great value, as, as crazy as that sounds. <laughs> what, do you, what so. you, you the manufacturer or what? <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, they, they're, that is well-priced for the performance that you get. I mean, they're an open back pair of headphones, super good build quality, and they're, they're really quite impressive. Um, obviously, they, they look like art, if you kind of look at them a little bit, like metal, metal all over the place, leather, ear cups, everything's super soft and they're ultra comfortable, but more importantly, they sound incredible. They really like blow you away in terms of the sound quality that you get. If you're listening to high quality flat files, even regular bad music, MP3s that you're streaming from Spotify, everything sounds really good, crystal clear, and they almost sound like uh, you, you have speakers in front of you as opposed to just listening mm. to some generic mm. headphones. Yeah. When when do you like so from from a, when you listen to them or when you use them what are your habits for you know for that kind of price I you think they'd be around your neck 24/7. <laughs> uh but when do you when do you listen most? I listen usually late at night. So when it starts getting to around turn off the speaker's time around 8 9 o'clock and I'm still kind of you know jamming out listening to whatever that's when I try to do it like to unwind you know late um, just plug them in, sit back in my chair and just kind of relax. I mean, I don't want anyone to see me with these on either. Cause they look ridiculous, but <laughs> like, you, you look ridiculous. You really oh, are. Well, okay. I now I got to change my, uh, one second. <laughs> <laughs> no, your, yours are fine. I mean, they, they look kind of bulbous. Like they're a little ridiculous, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> out in public, right? Like on the podcast, yeah, it's something different. Out in public. Yeah. I wouldn't yeah. be wearing these out in public. That's for sure. So I, I see away. more and more of that though, with, you know, folks out exercising and they got a pair of cans on and you're like, I, I don't know. I'm still yeah. not used to that. Right. I mean, it, yeah. it is, uh, it's a different day. Do you, for, for the, for the average guy, mm -hmm. like if we're talking a, you know, from, from a value perspective, uh, a, a pair of headphones. Um, what do you like in that in that kind of value price range? As we think, you know, 150 to 300 bucks. Uh, hmm. 150 probably. I would look at some of the Audio Technica stuff. Hmm. So it really depends on what you're looking for for sure. Um, but Audio Technica has some very good headphones. I think it's the K371. I I think that's the model. 
I'm just pulling that off the top of my head, though. Yeah, no, that you're doing really well for pulling it <laughs> off the top of your head. Yeah, so I, I think that's one of their newer models that came out. That's around the 150 ish dollar mark. Um, they make great stuff. If you're just a general user in that 150 to 300 dollar range, the Sony 100 MX3, which is the noise canceling model, that's what I use for travel. Those sound really good for that price range, and they're wireless or wired. They're pretty flexible, so that's a great bargain there as well. Um, there, there are a lot of a lot of just good headphones in that range. Uh, and obviously, if you want to go a little bit lower, anything from costs, I'm a big fan of them. I'm a big fan of what they do in like the budget sector. You had, you had put a cost. Let me bring that up. You had put a, a pair of costs. Uh, you call these, um, um, what do you call these? These are, so <laughs> this is a funny story. So I did, a, I did an actual video on these. These are the cost KSC 75 modded to be wireless. So the KSC 75 is like a literally a $15 set of headphones that sounds incredible. It has like a wide open back sound stage that you would get from something like the Focal Elex that I just mentioned earlier, but it's super budget um, and it's very light. Just a clip one that sits on your ears. Again, you look silly wearing them, but it's worth it. Trust me. Um, so these are one of my favorite pairs of headphones. I used to use them at work casually because they're super light. You can still hear people talking, just pop them on and off. But I wanted a wireless pair. Uh, and so I just made them myself, essentially. Uh, and when I did that, I cost actually commented on the video and said, hey, thank you for your support, blah, blah, blah. But I think we have something you might like in the future. They reached out to me and then they actually sent me these, which are a version of their existing headphones that are basically do the same thing that I built but better. So they've done it better. These are the KP30H or 30i, um, I believe that's what's called wireless. So these are really fantastic headphones. Uh, they're only about $40, but they clip right onto your ears and they're one of the best sounding budget headphones, especially in the wireless sec sector that I've ever heard. So you just clip them on and no muss, no fuss. Yeah. They're, they're super cheap. You can also get a wired version for around 30 bucks as well. Um, they have them on Amazon, anywhere you want to get them. Uh, they're really great. So people always ask, hey, I just want something I can work out in or something casual. It, I want that audiophile sound, but I don't want to spend a ton of money. Just go for these. Just trust me. Trust me. If, if you take anything from this video, <laughs> these are quality, quality headphones. Yeah. Yeah. 40 bucks. 40 bucks. Yeah. Well, so, wireless I mean, and, yeah. and, and, um, and how do they charge? Uh, you, these are micro USB still, so okay. still in the stone age for that, but it, you can make it work. Yeah. It's yeah, worth yeah. It. From about six hours for there, um, for charge. So yeah. are... That'll get you through a workout. If you're doing yeah. a six hour workout or longer, you, you have bigger problems. <laughs> um, yeah, if you're, unless you're the rock in my life. Yeah. And you can afford it. What, <laughs> um, what do you like from an earbud perspective? Uh, what do you like? Do you have a kind of a go-to that, that, uh, you, you use often? So I, I typically hate earbuds. I hate, um, I, I don't like that closed off feeling for whatever. I don't know if it's just a pressure thing. It's not my thing. I like more of a, I guess, a bud style where like the, the Apple AirPods, that would be more of a bud style. The problem is those don't typically sound good. So what I, I came up with a compromise. So I have this set here. This is the Razer True Wireless. Um, these are a hundred bucks. They, I'm not going to lie. They don't sound great. <laughs> they don't sound great. That's not the goal of them. But they're black. They look cool. You can put them in. They're water resistant. You can work out with them all day. They sound good for podcasts, et cetera. And the music is acceptable. So I use these for casual listening, sitting in the office, listening to podcasts and working out. And they slip right in your pocket. And they're $50 cheaper than AirPods. And mm -hmm. they don't, they're not goofy looking. So, I mean, these, if you're looking for true wireless earbuds, most of them simply do not sound that great. Um, I wouldn't rec recommend it. You'd get better bot or better audio from like something like a 10 T2, something that's cheaper and, and sounds better all the time. But if you're going to do it, go for convenience. Um, and that's what something like this provides. This Razer model specifically, I, I really have been a fan of. Nice. Yeah. That's no, a good, it's a good, I actually bought a cheap pair of, and I'm trying to remember, I reviewed these on the show maybe a oh, year ago. Oh, those knockoff AirPods? Yeah, those knockoff AirPods. Actually, I got yeah, them. you said they weren't bad. It's Shopco. 
And <laughs> yeah, they were like 30 bucks and they look just like it. In fact, I've had people like comment, you know, the, they always make the AirPod snob comment when you have those in, you know, like, oh, AirPods, right? I'm like, actually, no, I paid 30 bucks for these on clearance. <laughs> You're right. The sound isn't great, but when I'm doing a Peloton workout or yeah. I'm, it's, it's good enough, right? Exactly. For, for what you're doing. Um, those exactly. charge, I get maybe, I think I probably get four or five or six charges out mm -hmm. of them. Then I have to recharge them and, you know, put the, plug the base in and, and get that done, but good enough. But yeah, you're right. I think air or ear pods in general, not the greatest sound. I'm with you. I can't wear them when they plug up my ears like yeah. that. That just does not work for you. Mike, does that, are you okay with that when they? Well, so it used to, but the yeah. one saving grace that I have found. So I moved over to the AirPod Pros okay. and they have a transparent mode, which, so when you put them in, it'll go into, uh, if you don't change it, it'll go into like the full noise cancellation mode. And that's where you get kind of like that, like you almost want to like pop your jaw because like it's all, but you turn on transparent mode and all of a sudden it opens up. And I really like that changed AirPods for me on a sealed in um, earbud like the AirPod Pros are. It has a microphone on the outside, so it's still air pressure a little bit tight, but it opens up the microphone so you can hear a little bit from the outside, and it you lose that pressure sensation. And that was a saving grace for me. Those, those have been my new favorite wireless earbuds to wear, mainly because, I mean, like the audio quality is not amazing, right, on the sound, but... I would say more than acceptable and the microphones on them have gotten a lot better people like, I, cause I've asked people on the phone, like, Hey, do I sound good? Like, yeah, you sound great. And I've even done some AB testing a little bit. I'll switch over to my old AirPods and they can definitely notice a difference. So I don't know what they're doing with maybe the noise cancellation around me or what it is. It is interesting though, on those AirPod pros, it doesn't even look like there's a microphone. You hmm. can't tell where it's at. So I don't know if the speaker microphone on the outside is the same. Um, but yeah, that, that um, what I think they call it transparent mode is what makes those a lot better for me because I'm the same way. I don't usually like the uh, the fully clogged up style. I think the Sony in ear buds have a similar feature where they let the sound in as well. It's amazing. I, I love. I it. haven't heard either one, but now you're making me want to want to check them out. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, tr try it out because it it really did change the game because I do like how secure they are in mm. the ear. And they fit a lot better. And when you do need noise cancellation, you can switch to that mode on the phone gotcha. and it's it, it works great. But I have those in almost all day at work, at least one. Um, so I can answer phone calls real quick. I'm on the phone a lot and I use my iPhone. And then, uh, but I keep it in transparent mode and it also helps because you can hear people a lot better. It actually, it, it's almost like a hearing aid. It kind of <laughs> amplifies your hearing a little bit. You can kind of <laughs> kind of feel like you have superhuman hearing because it's, it's a digital microphone that it's picking up. And it's just amplifying it into the speaker of the wow. earbud. Have you uh have you had a chance to try them on a plane yet? The noise cancel? I will this next week. I have not yet. So flying out this next week and I'm really excited to see how will they compare because I'm gonna bring my Bose Quiet Comforts and then those as well. I still have the really old school Quiet Comfort Bose that are still wired so they don't have Bluetooth. So I'm hoping that the AirPods are good enough because <laughs> I hate being tethered to a wire. Although I did also just get a Nintendo D um, Switch that I'm going to be probably taking and playing some uh, Zelda on the flight out. And that only well, has a wired earbud port uh, built in. You can buy a Bluetooth adapter, but they do not support Bluetooth. That's the most modern and also Stone Age system ever made. I, that is what I'm finding. It is <laughs> so it has a USB C port, yeah. right? That's how it connects to everything. Yet they do not open up the Bluetooth to accept Bluetooth headphones. It's just the weirdest <laughs> like device you'll ever see. Yeah, I have I have a Switch. I love it, but I, it's just like it's so Nintendo. It's such a Nintendo. It is. Thing. But man, I they I forgot. Weird... It's a nostalgia, right? I open that thing yeah. up. I'm like, oh, this is so much fun. We had some friends over. We played Mario Kart and Smash, and I was like, oh, these are like the good old days. We were having just the best time. I, I don't think the four of us, you know, we're adults now. We're married, and we're boring. We have kids. And I'm like, man, we have not laughed this hard or had such a good time in a long time. So it was a lot of fun getting that Switch out. Yeah, they nailed the joy part of it. For they sure. did, and they nailed the party mode aspect mm -hmm. of it. And what I'm excited for is even like my buddy and I on our way back, we're flying back together. You pop that thing up on a stand, hand him one of the Joy Cons that's already on there. You like you're built for a two place person party. Yeah, with just the device, not bring anything extra, right? Pop Absolutely. off the cons, hand him one, and him and I can can race some Mario Kart on the plane ride home. <laughs> Love it.
uh, Andrew in the chat room said, wait, there's a Discord? There's have, they're, they're having a Discord conversation. I was like, Andrew, do you not listen to the 8,000 times I say the averageguy.tv slash Discord? I think, actually, I didn't say it tonight, so we'll we'll let that one pass. <laughs> we'll if let that wanna, one slide. If you want to join us in our Discord group, the averageguy.tv slash Discord. Um, I was, when I was on the plane to London, I had the 35s on. I had been sitting down. I think I watched a whole movie, and I got up to go to the bathroom, and I went to pull my headphones off, and it was one of those moments like you know you got the headphones on, but you don't. You kind of forget how loud it is in the plane, and then you <laughs> take them off, and I'm like, "Oh, yeah. it was almost shocking." You're like, "Whoa, oh yeah, I am on a plane." I, and I had been wearing those. I kind of put them on as soon as I sat down, and so I never really even heard us take off or, you know, just just the the regular cruising sound. And uh, it does make a huge difference. I, I was like, now I don't. Right now, I don't want to fly anywhere to yeah. do anything, right? You know, with what's going on. But um, it sure makes a big difference to have a really nice pair of of headphones to do that. Jay, are there better when we, you know, the Bose, the, you know, the 35s are kind of the industry standard. Are there yeah. better in your testing? Are there better noise canceling headphones that are similar in price to the Bose that you've come across? I haven't heard anything better at the noise canceling okay. aspect. Like I, I think I mentioned earlier, I have the Sony version, the MX or the 100 MX threes. So that's basically the direct competitor. They do a decent job, but the bows are still better at noise canceling. There's just, yeah. they just are. So, just... and the new 700s uh, that they came out with are decent as well. Um, but the 35 seems to just be like the ultimate sweet spot for people. Like it, yeah. it just is a, a go to for years and years, and it still is. So, I mean, I've heard some of the Bowers and Wilkins stuff, I've heard a lot of them, and the bows still just, if you're flying, there's, there's nothing like it. Yeah. No, it's, it's great to have. I, it makes me want to fly more just so I can wear them. You know, you're like, when you drop 350 bones on them, you know, yeah. you're like, oh, I should probably use these to mow the lawn or <laughs> something, right, uh, to, to get more time. Jay, as you look ahead on your channel and some things, you, you, you alluded to this a little bit earlier, but what are you looking forward to for the rest of the year? Anything review-wise? you doing anything new? If folks were going to follow you on YouTube, what could they expect uh, coming up here in the next six months or so? In the short term, um, I have a few cases that I'm going to be reviewing. Some nice new ITX cases that are actually from larger manufacturers, which is a new thing. So we're having, we're seeing an influx of ITX cases from major manufacturers now, which is something that I've been wanting for a long time. So it can drive the price down for sure, and we can get new designs, um, you know, custom pre-built stuff with custom cooling, all that fun stuff. So I have a few cases that I can't act, I, honestly, there's a box behind me, you can probably see it. That is a NDA case, which I can't talk about, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. We don't want but you to get, a, we don't want you get in trouble. <laughs> yeah, I have a couple things coming up uh, in that in that sector. And also, I'm really excited to see the new Ryzen laptops. I'm definitely gonna be picking up some of them. We're gonna have some eight core laptops, uh, which is gonna be crazy, just like, wow. I mean, like eight to 12 cores in a mobile laptop that's less than an inch thick and three and a half pounds. I mean, that, that's crazy. So I'm super excited about that as well. I'm also NVIDIA 3000 series cards when they come out. So the new round of cards should be releasing at some point this year. Um, so we'll look out for that as well. Those are the things that I'm, I'm most looking forward to. Uh, but in the short term, for short, hammering the cases, that's, that's my bread and butter come for some ITX builds and cases and, and stick for, stick around for it. Yeah. So, sounds good. Are, have you, are you hearing any winds of, you know, China kind of has shut down for three or yeah. four weeks. Somebody told me the other day that they're seeing blue skies in Beijing for the first time <laughs> in 10 years. Like that's how much things have shut down. I mean, that's, that's how, you know, wow. they're not doing anything because they can see <laughs> yeah. it's a blue sky. Right. Are you yeah. in, 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 are you seeing any effect of that on getting parts in or, or reviews or any of those kinds of things? Are you feeling that, that slowdown effect at all? Not yet in terms of parts. Um, I, I don't know if you guys remember. Do you guys remember the RAM shortage uh -huh. um, yeah. a couple years back? Yeah. So yeah. I'm just hoping that that's not what happens again yeah. across yeah. the board. I, I don't know if it's going to affect steel, metal, you know, aluminum prices, case materials like that, um, you know, precious metals. I'm not sure. I haven't seen anything yet, but all the stock that's currently in stock has been there, you know, was built, yeah. manufactured yeah, and yeah. shipped a while ago. Yeah. So yeah. this summer is when they're saying it's really going to hit, you know, ramp up here in the States. So we'll, we'll probably see it around summer, fall. That's when we would probably feel some of the shortages. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think you're right. It'll it'll probably take a while. Um, uh, let's see. So, oh, I was talking about the lawn. He said, uh, Andrew said, I thought you had a robot that mowed the lawn, so I didn't have to go out and put earbuds in to get it done. <laughs> no, I never actually got that built. I, I started putting it together, and it was like, ah, this is too hard. <laughs> so I just kind of, I kind of gave up on it. Um, yeah, you know, Jay, I think you're right. Um, it, the delay will be solid into summer, and it may be now may be a time to start acquiring some things <laughs> just before, right? If you're going to yeah. do a PC build, For now sure. might be the time to get it. If you're going to buy toilet paper you in the United States, you might want to do that yeah. like right now. I don't know if you followed this, but Costco is selling out of water and toilet paper and rice. <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't know how you feel about this, but it's kind of, that's a little, that's a little much. I, I said to my wife, I was like, Hey, like we don't have to go buy cases of it, but we might want to just, make sure we have some because yeah. there may be none there and walmart had even jacked the price up that's, um on, to, on toilet paper that's so it's great it's, it's, it's it is mass hysteria as usual and that's what you can come to expect from yeah. something like this but hopefully yeah. they can contain it somewhat hopefully it doesn't get too crazy um because it's not great it's not a great situation obviously this is the quote I wanted to get from Andrew a, a second ago. Makes you wonder whether working from home will become the new normal for some industries in China. Mm. And I, I know it's happening right now. And we just did a show. I had Dave Jackson on from School Podcasting. And we did a show, I don't know, a couple months ago about using podcasting technology to as audio for working from mm. home because it's just so much, like it's so much better when you get on a call and you can hear people and they can right. hear you, right, yeah. type deal. And now I'm kind of wondering, like, we're we're going through some things, and, and I don't know about where you work, but we're starting to think through those contingencies of what if we have to send everybody home and right. say, hey, two weeks, we're shutting the doors, nobody come in. Yeah. Are Have you guys, are there any uh, conversations going yeah. on where you work about that? Yeah, so actually, I work from home pretty regularly. Okay. I, I work in tech, so it's that's pretty standard um i'm actually working from home tomorrow so uh getting a little prep but we've talked about it internally obviously philly's a, a large city and yeah. we do work downtown my office is downtown so if they shut it down we'll probably be working from home like you said now yeah. we use google hangouts and and normal stuff but to your point i mean i hadn't even considered using podcast software that would make it a lot a lot easier you know? yeah yeah. Well, or, or at least podcast techniques, right? Mm -hmm. We, we do everything we can to have the best sound possible, the best presentation possible and to create community. So like, how do we do these things? Like, what if you ran a meeting, like you run a podcast mm -hmm. where it's just not everybody sitting around, you know, you know how meetings go, everybody yeah. get there, oh, how's your day, what's your weekend, like whatever. And you can have some of that, but you kind of need a moderator and someone to kind of lead the conversation. And Absolutely. you could have a meeting of 50 people like, like we're doing tonight. So we probably have, oh, we've got 10 or so out there in the chat room. You could, we could have 50 and that could be the three of us leading the meeting and the conversation and getting input from those 50. But have you ever been on a zoom, a zoom call with 50? Like it's awful. It's, it's a nightmare. It's yeah. just terrible. It, 10 people is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, everybody's trying to talk over each other. Yeah. And so it was just, you know, and we weren't thinking about it six months ago when we did that podcast, we weren't thinking about it, but it may come to that point where, hey, you, you can't, working remotely is not just working from home. Like there's a bunch of things that have to go into it to make sure you can get to systems and they're supported and mm -hmm. then the meetings. And then it's really important as humans that we do things together. You can't just, and you know, you can't just be isolated at home. Right. Like that's a bad experience. You get yeah. disengaged really fast. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so, you know, as a, a you know, you, you do some days from home too. You yeah. need those days in the office to connect with people, right. To connect with humans. Yeah. So I, I think, I think tech could be at the center of this when we think about if the whole, if all of the United States goes home now, China covers a ton of our manufacturing right now, the world's manufacturing is happening in China when mm -hmm. they shut down, that's pretty severe, right? Yes. In the United States, when we go home, chances are we can be pretty close yeah. to being just as productive in a lot of yeah. cases, right? Absolutely. Unless you're obviously the any sort of manual labor or yeah. teachers or stuff construction, like that. Yeah. construction. Yeah. Those kinds but of things, right? Most of our workforce, most of the skilled labor jobs for sure could probably do some sort yeah. of 
you know, be productive at home for sure. Yeah. Like all, we, all of our files internally, well, you know, like client deliverables and stuff like that, we keep in the cloud. So you can access all this, everything, everyone's everything from home at this point, uh, at least with our company. So it's pretty flexible. You could be anywhere, really. Sometimes I go to the coffee shops and, you know what I mean? You can really be flexible with where you work. So yeah. If you put the systems in place um, ahead of time, it, it, they could probably help mitigate some of the, the potential damage from from a shutdown, at least. Yeah. Well, I, we're in. It, it'll be interesting. I think we're still here in the United States trying to figure out, Mike, it are where you work. Are you guys having these conversations yet? Uh, it's mainly just wash your hands, people. Uh, <laughs> no, we have. We they haven't talked about it yet. They, I mean, yeah. obviously, we all at our work ha would have the ability to work yeah. remote. Yeah. So it's it, if it needs to happen, it needs to happen. Yeah. Well, I think the question is not ca can we work from home? I think most people can. The question is, how's the productivity when this is extended? Yeah. So how do, pe how, are, how do people feel and where does the, producti the productivity level go when it's two weeks of everybody at home? I don't think we've ever tested that. Yeah. Right. And it's a different, it's a whole different world of remote working when everybody's remote all the time. We interviewed a couple of years ago, we interviewed a guy and he worked for a company that made software. It was a social networking site for dogs. Okay. okay. So they exist. They're out there. Okay. The unique part about it wasn't that they created a social media. By the way, he said people went nuts over it. The dogs, <laughs> they would, it was like, so think about Facebook for dogs and they would, the owners would post like the dog is talking kind of thing. What? And the, yeah. And they would like, anyways. Okay. All right. So <laughs> the point, he said it was wildly popular, like posting pictures with the dogs. Oh yeah. yeah. Dog it. owners. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. For sure. So anyways, he would say they were all remote and they had created some software that had a picture of, so it, you put a sidebar on your monitor and it had a picture of your webcam during office hours. And no matter what was happening, every 15 seconds, that webcam took a picture. And it was, it gave them an opportunity to have that contact with people mm. throughout the day that gave them different looks. And then, so employees started dressing up differently. They would come in costumes or they'd make a funny face or they, <laughs> right. And it became the water cooler conversation virtually yeah. that because of every 15 seconds, whether you liked it or not, that camera was going to take a picture. Um, There's a um, business idea, uh, the work from home. Just all in one software, uh, online yeah. service for file management, video right. conferencing, everything that there's a business. We just can't. Well, I think go. it has to I think it has to be more it has to be it's more than just services of connecting people. It has to have that same human yeah. How do we connect people? Like we're connecting now. Mm -hmm. You gotta do more. It's gotta be more of that kind of stuff. Agreed. Right. And and so I, I think we're coming up. We're coming up on an interesting time. Jay, anything else I missed from you? I want you to comment on some things I'm uh, going to share, but anything that we missed from you? Looking around my desk for fun things. Uh, I, yeah. think we, I think we covered everything. Do we, we do a good job? Did we do? You, you, as always, did a fantastic job. Well, there's nothing better than interviewing a YouTuber because you're ready. <laughs> so, so Jay, uh, thanks for, for doing that. Hey, if you can stay around for a little bit while I, I talk about some gear. Absolutely. Or, you okay with that? Okay. Yeah. So in last week's show, uh, Schoonover, we were talking about, uh, uh, so the, the, well, here, let me go back to this. So the PC behind me, this is a, this is a Fujitsu. I, you, I bet you didn't even know Fujitsu made PCs. They no, do. Well, not. it's really server grade is what it was, okay. but it's a, Back in the day of the microservers, and they're still making microservers, but HP makes a bunch of them. But Fujitsu got in the space as well. This is a Primer G100 TX, I think. And it, it's a old Core i3 540, <coughs> so that's third or fourth gen, I think, Core i3 that mm -hmm. came out. It had been, and the reason I have the Windows 7 box, you know, we did a launch party for Windows 7 10 years ago <laughs> on this. I still have the box. I don't know why, but I do. We just retired the box because, and because and, Sarah was using it as a media center. And of course, media center guy data died. And let's just be honest, media center's dead. So I've been begging her like, hey, can can I get that box back? <laughs> like, I, I, you know, I want to use it. You're not using it anymore. And and so finally we swapped the Xbox. So she said, well, I need to have a DVD or a Blu-ray player. So I swapped the Xbox with it and brought it back. And I, I wanted to get more hard drives. So Kevin, we talked about this last week. Kevin got me this LSI. This will, I'll show it. A, an LSI eight port, six gig, 
raid SATA card. I got it off of eBay, 25 bucks. Like these things have gotten so cheap. You know, we, we do a lot of spinner drives here because we're creating a lot of storage space for Mm -hmm. it. And uh, so Kevin gave me that recommendation. I'll have the link to it in the show notes. If you're interested in doing that, he's going to send me, it doesn't have the right. I need a, you know, I need the, uh, the PC. um, And he's going to, he's going to hook me up with the PC end of that for it. This is more for server um, case. Um, But uh, Kevin, thanks for that recommendation as well. That was um, really helpful to get that done. So that came in during the week. I broke, I was mentioning it on the same, on the same, let's go back to the, on the same PC as I was taking this cover off. I'm sure you've never done this, Jay, but as I was taking the cover off, I broke the wire to the power switch. It was oh, tight no. in there. In it, no. and I, I mentioned this a little bit earlier. You can see I just ripped, <laughs> uh, I just ripped that wire right out, right? I was thinking, oh crap. Now, if I was smart, I would have known I have an extra case in the garage and I just could have salvaged it. But I went on um, I went on uh, Amazon and in a day they sent me new, you know, just a new switch cable for it. You could just oh nice. Right, just buy that. And so yeah. I just cut the end off, spliced it in, wired that in, went down to I, I couldn't find, you know, I was like, where do I get those? Well, let me ask you two. I needed that shrink, you know, the shrink uh tubing yeah, yeah. Well, where would you go to get that anymore like radio shack is closed micro center, if you have one i don't have i'm in a uh, while i don't I have said lowe's lowe's right in their electrical that'd department a, that'd have been a yeah. good cho- that'd have been a choice walmart had it but oh they did they didn't oh, have they didn't well. have it in they didn't have it in stock here of course got it o'reilly's that's right at the auto parts store oh, smart uh, so there you go so i went down to o'reilly's three dollars picked up some shrink some shrink you know the heat shrink mm-hmm. stuff uh, spliced it together, put it back in. I've never fixed wiring in a PC in my life. I just have never done that. Wired it all back up. Switch worked great. Uh, uh, it came back in. Mike, you and I have been working on an Unraid box with it. So somehow last week I got convinced to create an I'm Unraid. I'm so excited for your journey to start with Unraid, Jim. <laughs> we had the guys. We had John from from Lime, uh, the makers uh, in the uh, of and supporters of Unraid on uh, oh, a year ago. I'm, I asked him to come back on. So perfect Unraid box, right? Core i3 doesn't need a ton of power. We're not doing a lot of processing on it. I guess if I wanted to use VMs or Dockers for those kinds of things, I may want to throw more power at it in the future. But it just got me kind of started um, on that. So uh, 120 gig cache. Two one terabyte drives, just something to get it going. I got uh, I got mocked a little bit on Twitter when I put that out there. They're like, one terabyte drive. Yeah, but you see the whole community like came to your defense on Twitter. <laughs> it was just some troll like trolling like, and uh, man, the whole the whole community here. I think we had like four tweets telling the guy to pretty much pound sand. <laughs> it's like, dude, like, sorry, I just was getting started. So um, that that has been um, that's been. Um, and you get to do this Jay all the time, but I haven't built in a while. I just haven't oh, really? been, I just haven't had time to kind of work on those things. Our, my cars got broken into, well, not really, we left them unlocked and somebody went through them. Oh, no. And so I've been spending a bunch of time doing home, home automation, which has kind of filled that building niche. Have you done, Jay, have you done much home automation stuff? Do you have, you're in an apartment, so you probably yeah. don't care, right? Um, I, so I have a... <laughs> I have a more of like a personal stance on automation that I don't mm. trust any of it. More so, like, I get its utility, but I truly do not trust yeah. it. And I stance. really have to get over that. But well, that's kind of how I do you. That. So you have no Alexa, no, or none, no Amazon device, no Google no. device. Sorry. It was just crazy. It. No, for someone with as much tech as I have. Yeah. But well, that's I good. I, I, I go as far as I unplug my webcam from my computer when I'm not like, I, I'm one of those guys. Yeah, no, like okay. it's okay. You'll come to it. Eventually, <laughs> you'll have to give in, right? You'll want something that yeah. um, that does it. We so I've been spending a bunch of time putting up cameras. We put a bunch of ring cameras, and then Philips Hue, which does my lights, decided to stop supporting their V1 hub, and I gave in and bought a V2 hub. So Ooh. that came in. I got a refurb deal on it, thirty bucks, which isn't terrible, and uh, that came in this week. Um, and it's everything you expect, right? You know, they, they send you network cable, they send you the power cord. And then the old one was round and this one's square. Thanks, Phillips Hugh, for changing uh, from round <laughs> to square. And I'm sure there's some new things in it. So 
we'll be setting that up. I'll be talking about that here in a future show as well as that cut over to um, the Phillips Hue. And then let's see if there's anything else broken. eBay. Uh, we'll be working on some of the IC doc pieces as well. So we have some updates for you guys on those coming. I'm sure, Mike, I'm going to be asking you, on the, especially on the Unraid box, okay, what's next? Like, what do I need to do next? So you and I in future shows will be spending a little bit of time. That'll future be shows? Me. What are you doing after the, what are you doing after the show tonight? <laughs> well, I know what you're doing. I've, you're I've got fixing. to fix mine. Yeah, I cut off connection to mine trying to oh, reconfigure the network a little bit. So you're fixing yours. That's what I'm sure. doing afterwards. So Awesome. Yeah. Well, so it's been a busy, I've got a bunch of stuff to do, get these things set up, uh, get them done. It's kind of fun to be back fixing this. I'm sure, Jay, you enjoy the, you wouldn't do this if you didn't enjoy the process of putting this stuff together, right? Oh, yeah. It's like adult Legos. That's really all it is. That's a perfect way to describe it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it really is. I do I, I do find great joy in re, and I think this is why Mike and I get along so well, of repurposing stuff that has lost its life. 100% to to make it to make it work for something else again and so that's kind of fun do you do you do you do any projects i mean you work on so much new stuff mm -hmm. do you have old stuff that you try and kind of make work or are you more like no i'm kind of on the front edge of things so that's one thing where i do want to get better because i've historically covered like brand new whatever's just came out kind of stuff and I realized I, I can do that because I'm a 34 year old man with a job. And like a lot of the people who watch my channel can't just go out and, and buy those parts. So it's something I really have been thinking about long and hard lately. Um, I definitely want to start doing either Craigslist builds or eBay builds because you can get a lot of great used parts. I mean, there's tons of fantastic used parts that are still going to be reliable. So it's something admittedly that I haven't done in the past, but I'm going to definitely be doing that this year. And there's actually yeah. a great channel. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen. Um, it's OZ Talks Hardware. He does all mm. budget stuff. So it's it could be like, it'll be like a $300 gaming build. You know what I mean? Like something like that where he finds super budget components from Craigslist or, or um, eBay and just does really awesome systems that are still super effective for, for games. Yeah. That's my build right here. i7-3770, uh, 1060. And an, an old motherboard, and it games streams like you know full 1080p 60, so it's not bad. Yeah, I mean, old, the older components, quote unquote, old, still work very well. I mean, they're, they they're, it's not it's not like you're losing a ton unless you're doing something crazy. But right. if you're just yeah. gaming. I'm I mean, not gonna be able to edit 4K on this thing, but right. you know, for for what I needed to do, simple yeah. gaming and podcasting and editing together some simple 1080 videos gets the job exactly. done exactly and you saved like two thousand dollars a year uh, from upgrading <laughs> right but it is kind of fun to have the latest greatest newest, oh yeah trust me right yeah. i mean oh yeah <laughs> i think you need to be on both sides like i yeah. think it's good to have some stuff that's cutting edge up front and some stuff where you're just piecing it together on the and it costs you too sometimes more to do it this way because like if i want to update the cpu to like a new cpu this old you know the 1155 socket doesn't even work yeah. with anything anymore right so i'd have to swap out this entire thing if i really want to do any more upgrades to this thing mm -hmm. it's an entire swap whereas yeah. if i had spent just a little more money i could have gotten the new you know so so it, yeah. there's pros and cons if you just need someone right now that i works and I, you don't worry about upgrades but sometimes it can actually put you in a little trap which i realized oh. too late <laughs> jay what was it what was the name of that channel again that you said oh yeah oz so oz like oz talks hardware okay. oh. yeah Okay, super good. You are at Tech Everything on Twitter. You mm -hmm. are, I'm sure, YouTube.com -E slash T E K too. We should yeah, specify T E K. -E -K. -E -K. Yeah. And you're at YouTube.com slash Tech Everything. Yep. You are at Tech Everything dot com yep. as well. And let me encourage you to go out, follow Jay, do all those things. Uh, his your videos are great. I mean, I just, I really, you're kind of straight oh, to the point. Wow. No, you're straight to the point. That's why that's why I like them. So go out there, uh, subscribe, uh, watch them as well. We'll remind folks, we're live every Thursday, 8 p.m. Central, 9 Eastern out here. We got uh, Ryan Kirshner, Bob's coming back from uh, Think Computers. And uh, we had to cancel that show because my internet didn't work. Jay, we're just really glad your internet actually came back because... Uh, that we, was crazy. It, it literally, like, 7.55. No. I'm like, seriously? Come on, Comcast. And then StreamYard I, quit on me halfway through. Was that, I think was it was my internet because everything 
just everything nothing else seemed to be offline just, it just well, kicked me off for a brief second we we got it done thank yeah. goodness <laughs> um you know we did get it done a couple reminders you can join us in the discord group the average guy.tv slash discord in our facebook group the average guy.tv slash facebook both groups are very active if you want to get it done we want to thank our patreon subscribers as well for helping uh, do what they do each month it's the beginning of the month and 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 i just got the check appreciate well it's not a check anymore, right? Nobody does checks anymore. My wife apparently still does checks. I just did the budget <laughs> yesterday, and she's still doing checks. But uh, we appreciate you guys on Patreon. You help us kind of keep all these things running, and so we appreciate it. If you want to join us in the Patreon group, if you want to support the show, theaverageguy.tv slash Patreon gets that done. We also want to thank Maple Grove Partners. They do secure, reliable, high-speed hosting for uh, theaverageguy.tv, so both media and web hosting uh, plans start as little as ten dollars a month, and you know it's Christian. He does it really, really well and very, very efficiently. And so, head out to Maple Grove if you need anything. MapleGrovePartners.com. We will be back next week, next Thursday. Uh, actually, Mike, I think you're out, right? I'm it's out, sadly. I'm, I'm missing Brian, Bob, and yeah, me. I know. It's okay. More hardware, Jay. You'll have to maybe join us in the. You'll you may like that one because these guys do the big RGB massive fans cooling everything <laughs> you might want to come in and, and just talk some crap in this oh game. for sure, sure. <laughs> Jim in says the- yeah it's okay Mike you're gone we don't really, <laughs> <laughs> we don't really need you by the way <laughs> yeah, we, uh, we'll be back next Thursday 8pm Central 9 Eastern uh, thank you for joining us tonight with that we'll say goodbye everybody